Hey everyone, Professor Davis here. We are going to be diving into medical terminology through these lectures. Now with these lectures, we're going to go through each chapter in a book that we utilize. It's called The Building a Medical Vocabulary. This book is a really unique book because it's set up like a workbook. As you go through, it's making you go through and fill it out as you go. I highly suggest that. It's very helpful in this process. I am not going to be going through every part in every chapter. I'm kind of going to give just a basic overview of some things that will maybe will help you understand what the chapter is kind of focusing in on. And these first three chapters are going to be where we're going to start the foundation for building this idea of having a medical vocabulary. All right, so let's dive in and take a look at this. So one thing we want to look at here is we are looking at this idea of word parts. When we talk about a lot of times medical terms, they're going to be multiple parts put together in order to give us meaning. And when we change parts of those words, it changes the meaning of them, right? And this allows us to have a very large kind of repertoire of words that we're looking at. Now with this, it's important that you are able to ID the roles of these terms, whether it's like I said, a prefix, what we're gonna look at is a prefix or a suffix or if it's the root of the word, examples of these, as well as demonstrate correct usage of them. All right, and so this is kind of the point throughout this first lecture. Now, word roots are really important because they're the foundation of the word. And so they, they are going to be kind of the main core thing of the word, the meaning of that word. And now that meaning can change if we add prefixes, which are gonna go at the front of the word, or suffixes that are gonna go at the end of the word. And technically you can have one of each. You can put them on there and it changes the entire idea of what that word means. When we add suffixes, we have to look at what we call our combining form of the word. The combining form is where we take the root word, but there's gonna be some sort of combining vowel. And we put those in parentheses. This might be an O, it might be an I, okay? It's a, it's a vowel that helps us be able to, in the English language, produce the word correctly by adding on that suffix. Now, that vowel may go away, especially if the suffix begins with a vowel itself. We don't necessarily have multiple vowels in a row. And so those will kind of be where they might be used or not be used based on the words we're looking at. Now, one thing to note when we're talking about a lot of times these medical terms is they are going to be in normally one of two languages, or at least the basis of them is. This is gonna be in Greek and also in Latin. When we look at this with Greek and Latin, they're really important when we look at breaking down the words because sometimes we will have pieces that mean the same thing in Greek or Latin, but the word root is a little different. So the example here is derma. Derma is going to be the Greek root for skin, but cutis is the Latin word, okay, root word for skin. And so when we talk about dermal, we're talking about the skin, okay, in the here pertaining to the skin. But if we also talk about cutaneous, it's also pertaining to the skin. So we have two different ways that we could use this, whether it's in the Greek or the Latin. Okay, another example is things like bicycle. Bi is the Latin prefix for two, and then sickle means wills. So we have a bicycle is something that has two wills. On the other hand, di is the prefix for two. And so dioxide means I have two molecules of oxygen. All right, and so when we look here, that's how we can look at building these words. So this just kind of shows you how this word building kind of works. This shows you puzzles and it's kind of putting them together, changing out the different puzzle pieces in order to give us different words. And so if you look here, this first example has a prefix, which is before the root. We have the root in its combining form with that O in the parentheses, and then you have the suffix at the end. Okay, so with our prefix here, it's gonna be poly. Poly means many. And then we have arthro, which is going to be our combining word, which means joint. And then itis, which is the suffix that means inflammation. And so if we put these together, poly just goes on the front end of the root word. Okay, and normally there's nothing added there. Prefixes fall in there very easily and just get added to the beginning of the word. So we have poly arthro. But that O is going to be taken off when we add itis because we don't need an O and an I next to each other. So we take that O off and this is why we have polyarthritis. Okay, and so we have it saying that there is inflammation in many of the joints, if we were to break down that word. Now, sometimes we're going to add multiple prefixes. Sometimes we may only have a prefix. Maybe we only have one suffix, but there's lots of different ways to build these words. 
Another example is where if there's not a root word altogether, the combining form's not there. We just add a prefix to a suffix. In this case, we have a dis, which is, means difficulty, and penia is breathing. So dyspenia is going to be difficulty breathing. And so again, we're going to work through this as you go through of kind of learning these different prefixes, suffixes, and root words in order to then build those vocabulary words. Or also, if we get the vocabulary word, we're able to break it down into its meaning. That way we're not memorizing every medical term out there, we're just learning the parts so that we can then break them down. So here's just an, another example if you were writing medical terms. If you were given kind of a sentence of saying, hey, what is it, what is the medical word if we're talking about increased adrenaline in the blood, okay? Again, we would have to break down this definition and see what kind of prefixes, root words, and suffixes we would need to use. In this particular case, you have hyper in here. That's going to mean increased. Adrenaline, when we're looking at here, is the adrenaline, and that's going to be the root word. And you can see the, the combining form with the O in the parentheses. And then you have blood here is going to be represented with the suffix emia. All right, and so if we put all this together, hyper just, it's added on. The O is going to be dropped since the E in emia and the suffix is a vowel. So we have here hyperadrenal emia. And so we can put those together in order to create a very complex term for our definition. On the other hand, there are times where we're given the word. And if we can break down the pieces of the word, we can then get the definition. So in this case, we have periophthalmitis. And so peri is going to mean around. Okay, so that's where around comes in. And then we have ophthalma, which is our root word, which means I, that's our combining form. And then we have itis, which is the inflammation. And so here, this is inflammation of the tissue around the eye. Okay, and so this is where we can then break down the word to get the definition. And so the goal of this class is to help you be able to construct vocabulary and deconstruct the vocabulary as well. And so here are some examples. In some cases, there's gonna also be two root words that can be put together. That's what we see in this first example. You have gastro, which is a root word. You have the combining form with the O. And you also have entero with the root word with the O. And then you have ology. And so there's times we may have to put these together. And so if we're putting them together, gastro, enterology is going to be the word we're looking at. So here, gastro keeps its O, even though entero has an E at the beginning, it's not a, it's not a suffix, so we're not going to drop the E, or we're not going to drop the O. So this is gastroenterology, because we don't need two O's in a row. All right, so let's look at the next one. If we have here, and we have ortho, and we have pedics, we would put these together, and we're going to keep the O because pe pedics does not start with a vowel. So this is orthopedics. Okay, the next one is cardio and ology. We are not gonna again have the two O's together, so this is cardiology. Entero and IC is going to take the O, and this is enteric. The next one is a prefix onto tension, so this is hypertension. And our last example, guys, is where we're adding two prefixes. So there are times we may add two prefixes together. In this case, we have anti-hypertension. Guys, this changes the whole meaning. Hypertension means high blood pressure, okay? If it's anti-hypertension, it's something against high blood pressure. That's what blood pressure medication is there to do. It's to fight the high blood pressure. So this is kind of what you're gonna be looking at throughout here is where you're gonna be building the words, tearing the words apart, looking at what each of these parts mean. Now this would be great if all the words worked like that, but some of the words are where they're not going to be constructed terms. They're not terms we can actually break down into pieces. And there's some examples of why this is the case. So when we look at the meaning of non-constructed terms, they can't be analyzed or deconstructed into parts because they actually come from something else, okay? And with this, they're just gonna have to be memorized as we go through here. So the first example here are the eponyms. The eponyms are going to be words that come from people's names. So they've been named after people. This could be a procedure that the person developed. This could be a disease that the person discovered or found first so they got to name it after themselves. So this would be things like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Down syndrome, or the procedure of a cesarean section. 
okay? We also abbreviate that as a C-section, okay? And so we see that that is gonna be something you just have to memorize. We also have acronyms. Acronyms are going to be derived from the first letter of a series of words. We use acronyms a lot to memorize things. They're a really good way to memorize. An example of this is something that we pronounce as a cabbage. When somebody is going in for a procedure called a cabbage, it's C-A-B-G, and we pronounce it as a cabbage, but it stands for coronary artery bypass graft. Okay, and so we take the big term, all those words put together, and we then give it an acronym in order to use it better, okay, in that sense. The next one are abbreviations. Abbreviations are used a lot in the medical field. You're gonna find them all the time in medical records and different things like that. And abbreviations just gonna save some time and some space in there, but you still have to know what they mean. And so something like complete blood count is known as a CBC, okay? We also see that AIDS stands for Acquired Amino Deficiency Syndrome. Okay, and so we can see that we can use abbreviations to help us. Another one are going to be where we can shorten the words. And so instead of saying we want a differential, a blood differential, we might say it's called a blood diff, okay, where we shorten the word. So these are just some examples of some things that can't be deconstructed. And so some memorization is going to have to come into play here. Another thing we need to look at is how do you form plurals? Because there's rules to how we form plurals. We have this in the English language regardless. Sometimes we can simply just add an S to the end of a word and it makes it plural, like in the sense of an assistant and you have assistance where you have more than one. But there are rules like when you have a word like party and I wanna make it plural into parties, the Y goes away and I have to add an IES. And so we have these rules in English that you have to follow. Same thing here in the medical field when we're looking. Another example is if a word ends in a CH or a SH, in both of those cases, you have to, you can't just add an S, you have to add an ES. So sandwich into sandwiches, brush into brushes. Sometimes the word changes almost all together when we have something like a goose and then you have a geese. All right, and so it's really important when we look at those rules for creating plurals. And so in the book, there are going to be these 10 ways that plurals are formed with special endings. And I listed examples of each of them here. So these are the 10 different ways, and it's an example that falls into each of these. And so the first one is if it ends in IS, so if you have diagnosis, that becomes diagnoses. Okay, you're going to take the IS off and you're gonna add an ES to it. Another one is bacterium. If you have a UM on the air, you're gonna take that off and you're gonna just add an A. So bacterium is the single, whereas bacteria is the plural. So if you have bronchius, where you have a US at the end, you're gonna take that US off and we're gonna add an I where it's a bronchii. The next one is patella. If we have the patella, we're going to see that we're gonna keep the E, or sorry, we're gonna keep the A, but then we're gonna add an E to it. So you have patella and then you have patellae, okay? Appendix, I have IX. Now, next, technically the next three all kind of fit together. You have appendix, cortex, and thorax. All of them end in a vowel and an X. So I have IX, EX, AX. In all of those cases, you're gonna take off the vowel and the X, and you are going to add ES to the end. Okay, so you have to take off the vowel and the X and add ES to the end. That's what makes it plural, okay? Um, on sarcoma, it may be as simple as if you have an A at the end, you just add an S, okay? In most cases, that works fine. But in some cases, you may also see it as sarcomata, where you're going to not just add an S, instead you add a TA to the end. So spermatozoan is one of the examples here with I have Z-O-O-N. If we have that, the second O and N comes off and we add an A to it, then this is where it's spermatozoa. So instead of spermatozoan, we have spermatozoa. So if it ends in an X, so like phalanx, where I have an X, that means one finger. If I'm gonna talk about it being more than one, then I have to take the X off and I'm gonna add G-E-S, and that's where we have phalanges, multiple fingers, All right? And so these are, again, not expecting you to have them memorized off the bat, but these are gonna be things you're gonna be seeing throughout these where we're gonna create it going from singular to plurals. Now in the rest of this chapter, the way it's going to have you practice with this medical terminology of building and breaking down is they're going to introduce you a lot to the specialists, 
okay, and these specialties that we see in the medical field. And so they want you to be familiar with these medical professions and the professionals that are part of them. So here are some of our suffixes. Remember, suffixes go at the end of the words that are going to help us with these specialties, okay? And so some of these you've heard a lot about. So you have ologist, ology, if you have just ER at the end, you have IST at the end, okay? Um, you, if you've heard of things like pediatrician, when you have trition at the end, it's talking about the practitioner, person who practices that, all right? So you have lots of suffixes that can be used. Now, I do want you to pay attention to the last two bullets. If you notice that the AC, AL, IC, and ICAL all mean pertaining to, so like cranial, those are all going to be pertaining to. But if you look at the logic and logical, those are going to be pertaining to the study of. So it adds a little layer to it, all right? But they all, they still both mean pertaining to there. When we look at medical specialties, you are going to see those root words come into play. So here, dermato is one of the examples. So derm, remember, meant skin. So dermato is skin. Gynec is going to be female, so a gynecologist is going to be a person who specializes in the care of the female anatomy. Ophthalmo is the eye, so if you go to an ophthalmologist, they're going to be specializing in the eye. We have ped or pedo is going to be for a child or foot. Okay, so you have a pediatrician, but then you have a, pet a podiatrist. Okay, that's where we're looking at there. And then rhino is going to be focusing in on the nose. Um, some other things with medical specialty is you may notice that they'll put at the end of it surgery. So if they are a pediatric surgeon, okay, or they do pediatric surgery, okay, it's telling you specifically it's something more than just working with just kids in general. We also see that they could be part of a family practice. They could do internal medicine or they'll be known as an internalist or even forensic medicine. So they can be very specific in these fields. Now, the last thing I kind of want to hit on in this particular chapter is where we're looking at medical terms and abbreviations that are important as an introduction. And one is anatomy. Now, anatomy is the science of the structure of the body, okay? And we normally don't see it by itself. It's normally talked about as anatomy and physiology. So the study of the structures of the body as well as study as how they work, okay? they kind of go hand in hand. We also see that when we're looking at this idea of talking about anatomical type terms with anatomy, you may have it where it's a noun versus an adjective. So let's talk about the head. Cranium is talking about your head as the noun, but cranial is talking about the adjective. So cranium, cranial nerve would be explaining that it's pertaining to the head, but it's a nerve found in the head. Okay, so again, it can help us be able to break down what it actually means. On the other hand, diagnostic terms include terms that are going to describe um, disease like fever, headache, as well as clinical studies, lab tests that are used in the diagnostic field, radiological studies. Those are all going to be diagnostic type medical terms. We also have a pathology. So pathology includes the names of the diseases and the disorders. So if you are a pathologist, you study those diseases and disorders. Um, I teach a class called pathophysiology. So that's the patho with the physio part. So not only is it the disease, but how does it progress and what does it do in the body? So again, breaking those words down more. Um, we also have surgery. Surgery includes the names of operative procedures. So different types of operations. We'll be looking at those throughout the chapters. We'll also look at non-surgical therapies. Non-surgical therapies are gonna be things that are going to be used besides surgery to treat something. So like medications, physical therapy, occupational therapy, there's gonna be different types of treatments out there that are non-surgical that we also need to learn their terms. And then I also added pharmacology on here. Now pharmacology actually kind of fits under the non-surgical therapy side, but pharmacology is specifically the study of drugs, their origin, how they work, um, the effects they have. That's going to be that kind of big umbrella when we talk about like medications. Um, so a pharmacist is the licensed person that prepares and sells these drugs. You have a pharmacy, which is the branch in the health field that deals with studying it, but also dis distributing the drugs. Okay, so this is a big group too when we're gonna be looking through these chapters.
some abbreviations that are important. I already hit on the fact that you're going to find that in medical terminology all the time. But in this case, you have things like the Affordable Care Act is ACA, uh, date of birth is DOB, uh, physical examination is PE, um, diagnosis is a DX. So all of them actually make a lot of sense until you get to diagnosis and you're like, why DX? But it even gets harder, like think about prescription, it's an RX. Okay, but these abbreviations are developed in order to be able to create that shorthand, make things be able to be used a little bit quicker, faster, but that also means you have to know them. All right, so this is where we're kind of diving into this idea of building this medical terminology, building our vocabulary as we go through here. So if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Mm -hmm.